your service. Ah, uh, today is your lucky day, my friend, for I have a fortune especially for you. Listen closely. Sometimes you can tell a wise person not only by what he says, but also by what he doesn't say. There's something I've been putting together, and recently I got a chance to go somewhere. Either answer my questions or make me even more curious. Don't know It has taken me two years to try to record this video. I don't know why it's so hard to share my experience with you guys of one of the most haunted museums in the world. Here's my hypothesis and why I think that is. The psychology of magic is a non-set field of research that examines the underlying mechani mechanisms that conjurers used to that conjurers use to achieve enchanting phenomena, including sensory illusions. I made a living out of giving the impression that I have paranormal abilities, but I don't. In my work, I use a mixture of magic, suggestion, psychology, misdirection, and showmanship. So, if you look it up, there is what method, um, if you look it up, there is a thing called mentalism. And I, there, I think that's part of the museum. I'm not taken away of how cool the museum is. And it's not to say that I don't believe in the paranormal either, but I like to keep things balanced in my mind. Not everything's paranormal. Not everything's not paranormal. There is no proof that it doesn't exist and there isn't of concrete evidence of the paranormal yet. The closest to it is what Zach has done. I went into this trying to prepare my mind in case he was using the technique of mentalism where Houdini would use before a performance. Houdini would use a technique to prepare the mind of the audience before he did a performance, especially if it was dangerous. He would explain what was about to happen, what would happen if something went wrong, and left the audience with that in their mind. They would create that what if in their mind as he was starting to perform. For example, the underwater trick, he would come and show them the handcuffs, the key, and the backup in case something wrong would happen. On doing so, the audience would be like, oh crap, if something does happen, that means this is dangerous. If there's already like, he would create the anticipation of danger or whatever was gonna happen. My point, when I saw that you have to sign a waiver if something would have happened to you, I understand if, if something would to happen, but in my thinking, I thought he was using that as a technique to make people think, oh shit, <laughs> I might die. 
or I might get sick or I might because it does say that. That's my opinion. How do you know what's good for me? That's my opinion! So, I was left with that in my mind, like, don't let it get to you. It's just, when I get there, I want to keep my mind focused to see what really happens. Because if you would, if you want to enjoy it, fine, but I would, I went as an experiment to see if it's the closest I could get to a real ghost hunt because <laughs> I don't have a group <laughs> and the only one time I experienced paranormal is when I grew up and I have that in my channel if you want to go look at it I have a video on that it's to me the closest to a paranormal experience might have been something else I'm not taking that out of, out of the equation and to overcome that fear that I had because of what happened to me when I was younger with the paranormal. I was nervous, I will admit. And my poor hubby was looking at me like, what did you get me into? This is creepy. <laughs> but it was fun. So the first part, like I said, they make you do the, oh, I went in. I had brought the tickets online ahead of time which are not that bad of a price but I like the price um, please go before you go if you're religious in any way for your mental health and your spiritual health please I advise you to get a blessing or whatever your religion do that before you go we did my mom's a chaplain. I asked her to bless me. And we did a little thing of our own. So please prepare yourself before you go. As we went in, I we, you get the tickets in the in the inside and then they make you go, they give you the paperwork to sign. It was hot, but it was nice that day. And they had like little this to keep you nice and cool. I like that. For some reason that day which I thought was funny, it happened to be that the toilets were down. And I was like, great, if I have to go to the bathroom, that sucks. But that day, for some reason, it was Sunday. The toilet system was, something happened. I don't know, wait, what? <laughs> Me and the paranormal, every time I'm with, if I'm going somewhere like that or a place for some reason, I'm not saying it's me, but I, I have experienced the weirdest crap with technology and anything plumbing. It either breaks or starts leaking if it's in any way or some activity. For some reason, if, if I go next to it, or buy it or whatever for some reason I can't wear watches I have to wear magnets and stuff to keep from messing up technology um, I don't know if anyone watching believes in that, but I have a lot of static. For some reason, in these places, always something happens like that. Something, well, maybe it's just because of that. I didn't think much of it. Other than if I wanted to go to the bathroom, I couldn't. Anyway, I thought it was funny. The guy announcing it was awesome, and I missed the clip and I wanted to record that part because it was funny.
that I missed it. So we go in right away. I can smell the sage. I like sage. <laughs> oh wow, it smelled like sage. And it was dark and no offense to whoever decorated. There's just candles that you buy at Walmart <laughs> with the little batteries. I, it's nice in the dark, but I, I like decorating so I can tell right away, ooh, those are the ones that I have some that you decorate with. I'm not trying to make fun of, I just think it's nice. And um, right away, the warning sign, which I was looking out for anything that would make me start thinking stuff on the back in the back of my mind for your creepy out like fun house because i didn't want that to get in the way of me thinking if this is real or not i wanted to experiment because in my family my grandma great great grandma actually was a psychic medium but I'm more of a, more on the side of logic than that stuff, so I might have something. I'm not sure. People have told me, but mm -mm, I don't want to. I don't know how to take it. I don't know if I should believe it or not, because I don't want to be the crazy girl. <laughs> I think she can talk to people. On the other side i'm not saying whoever can is crazy i'm just saying i don't want to i'm not gonna make I, anyway no judgment i just feel crazy if i accept it like that this is my personal opinion but i wanted to experiment and see if if for some reason it is true and for some reason my grandma was Maybe I have something. And if I do, the only way I would probably experience something with a controlled hypothesis, I sound so scientific, is in a controlled environment. I don't have the means to go and investigate a place. Because I, one, I don't have money. <laughs> Two, don't have a group. Three, I don't have, you need paperwork and all that stuff. Pennsylvania is full of stuff like that, but I don't have the means to it yet. And this was like, I think my only way of like experimenting with the idea. So we went. Plus to overcome that trauma of the scariness of it. If I ever wanted to keep going into it and help others with the same situation. So I, I saw the warning sign. I took a picture next to it. We go in. This is so dark. I mean, you can't see. And then explain you can't take cameras in. You can't do anything. So I, I turn off my phone, turned everything, put it in my big old book bag. <laughs> I left it in there. Um. Right away, I I'm five feet. For some reason, the place seemed bigger to me. I don't know why. It felt small. To me, it felt small, and on TV it looks bigger. I don't know. But I'm five feet, and it looks small. I'm not complaining. I'm just it looks different on TV. Anyway, first room right away. I don't know if I was psyching myself out, and I was trying not to. We go in the group, and as soon as we go in. By the way, our tour guide was named Christy. Christy, she's super sweet. She was super sweet. She's explaining the tour and mind you, I you could tell me a story and word to word, I won't remember it. I'll just remember a, resum a resume of what you were telling me, but I won't remember word to word. So I was kind of like listening to what she was saying. And regretting not taking cash because you could do like a little fortune teller thing, which I thought was so cool. 
and maybe next time if there is one and um as soon as two minutes roll in i'm getting a weird smell talking about it um saw a shadow go over us the crowd the little group and her and i saw it i was like oh <laughs> And this lady, what? What? And I didn't want to scare, like make a whole scene, but everybody's, I'm like, nothing. <laughs> and I, and my husband was like looking at me, and I was telling him, I saw a shadow. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. I was like, oh shit. I'm like, huh? <laughs> I'm like, maybe it's like I'm looking to see if there's like mechanis mechanisms or like, <laughs> you know, they have like nowadays holograms and crap. I'm not trying to knock the museum down but i want i always explain everything away before i that would be the last possible thing is paranormal activity or whatever or the supernatural and i'm like i thought i think i saw a shadow it was right where the first room you go in i want to add this isn't the first time i've seen shadows before but it's been rare and this was very weird into where the little house little doll houses and the fortune telling thing and it's on this i forgot what's on this i guess the entrance so she keeps explaining away and then zach the fortune telling machine comes on i heard something downstairs i can't talk about this stuff I can't remember for the love of me what's in the next room after that. But we go in. I think that's what it is. I think it's the Co Dr. Kovakian room. I might be wrong. Can't remember the order of each room. And she's complaining about that room. I feel like, oh my god, I don't like this room. Because <laughs> of who he was and stuff. I mean, tells us like go ahead you can look at the van look inside not look inside but you could go pay, like look at it and stuff my hair is just saying it the for some reason i don't know if it was my mind playing tricks the mannequin itself i saw breathing the girl mannequin that they have inside the van I'm like oh cool they put a little you know an air pump to make it look like it's breathing and I'm like oh you guys is that breathing does that make it breathe and the tour guy looks at me like no that doesn't doesn't not supposed to be just a mannequin so I'm like well that was weird so we go to another room the other room is the office of Dr. Kevorkian and then there's a little TV and it starts explaining about what he did and stuff and i don't know if in the section over here there's like a little surprise room i can't remember right i think there's something with the lady that would experiment with the paranormal stuff it was creepy because when they open the door and they talk about it in pictures and they never you can't find that on the internet i tried looking they even have said like you can look for it you can't find it it was weird they opened the door and just my hair stood up it's like the weirdest and for some reason i don't know it's it, it, i'm not talking much am i so that was that room it was creepy and it reminded me of my experience in the apartment where i used to live at when i was little the paranormal haunting apartment whatever from that room we went on to which one we went next Lugosi's haunted mirror. Again, it felt small. I don't know why. Maybe because it was so many people. He explained it away about Lugosi's mirror. And there's the painting of the sad kid. And then there's this other huge mirror that she said something about it. And I can't remember too much of it. But recently I had this dream that looked just like that mirror. And I'm up put in a picture of the drawing that I saw in the dream. Which later, when I looked up the weird symbol in the mirror, it's a sigil for something. And I'll just put it in the 
clip. It's really creepy. <laughs> this is when the tour guide asked if we wanted to look at the mirror. Optional only. It was optional. I was there. I, I spent money. I'm gonna look at the mirror. <laughs> so my husband did one too. I was fine. I wanted to see what would happen. So he steps aside. We step in line for each person, looks at it, and then he leaves, looks at it, and they leave. Some were giggling, whatever. I breathe in, I try not to get freaked out, and look at the mirror, and then I remember there's this technique to meditate that you could look into a mirror and it starts to morph. Your face will start to morph after a while if you look at yourself enough or long enough. I didn't want that to happen. That's what I was scared of. That's, that's so creepy. So I was looking and I'm like, okay, that's enough. When I said that to myself, the mirror lights flickered. I don't know if this is planned or part of the tour, but that was weird. And when that happened, I looked at her and she looked just as surprised as I was. So I'm like, okay. So I left, we went to the other room. I think the next room was the skulls and stuff that he has like a collection of stuff on the wall that you like, Cryptoid, I forget the name of it, it's not cryptoid. It's um, dead animals and skulls and stuff. And then the skull that they pull out was a copy of, I think, he has a skull. That's the one that he has a picture and he's holding it, I guess. And she was saying, hey, if anybody's interested in want to hold it, if it's a real human skull, I'm like, oh, well, why not? <laughs> I'm adventurous. I touched it and I'm like, oh, Nothing happened, but I did kind of like, oh, it took a while for me to like, because I was like looking at it and looking, talking to my husband. We took a little bit longer than we should, and they're like waiting for us over there. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, the debit box. <sighs> okay. This next room was my goal to go in and not let it be optional. The debit box room because where I grew up it was concluded by a pastor before the week before we left we did a prayer ring with grandma on the phone pastor said there was a portal to the other side in my room on top of that across the street there is a huge cemetery on top of that the buildings there were already old on top of that was it half an hour? yeah half an hour away from where i lived um was it ted bundy no jeffrey the serial killer lived not that far add all that up <laughs> there is something i'm pretty sure there's something there it was dark because the voice and the weird um at least the voice was dark that one time i experienced an out out of how do you call that i forget what they call it it's not an evp me and my brother heard the voice at the same time if it was in my head, we're connected and we're doing telekinesis or something because we both looked at each other and ran when we heard that deep voice. The second thing that was stood up to me a lot was, I forgive me for jumping, but this is what, why I wanted to go. I think it was a week before we left the apartment. We were cleaning up and stuff and behind the dresser drawer was a shadow hand, black shadow hand. Mm -hmm. Whatever my dad would do or I did, no ma no amount of cleaning, painting, or wiping would take away the hand. Like a little printed black shadow hand. 
it still doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Until the day we left. The very day we left, it was, it disappeared. And I'm pretty sure it's because we all did the, the thing, the prayer, right? Anyway, I was left with that. <laughs> that trauma, I guess you want to say. And I wanted to overcome that. So this is why I wanted to at least go through with the debit box because that's like a heavy one. <laughs> and it to me was similar to what happened in my house or apartment. So they were explaining away. This is optional room. You can come in. This is the debit box room. Did I go before or after? I think I went before. Nope. I went after. Um, what's his name? Went and touched the box with Zach. And they were explaining that. And they were explaining this is an optional room. Blah, blah, blah. If you don't want to go in, you can say, my poor hubby went with me. And I think that was the most or the most heroic thing and the sweetest thing. He could have stayed out in the door, but he went right, like he know I'm not leaving you, we are gonna do this together. That was very cool, very sweet. I did start to freak out a little bit. And I wore this by the way. I took this with me and to protect me and my great grandmas. And I was keeping that in mind. Keeping in mind, I remind let my mom bless me before I went in. At the same time I am talking to myself like you have to overcome this like if this is something you're going to continue to do in the future like to help other people that have gone through this whatever traumas with the paranormal whatever like i have to i have to go through with it i couldn't let myself so i went in two girls stayed behind when they found out they had to stay next to the door by themselves they were like no this is kind of funny that kind of calmed me down to the laughter. I calmed myself down. I tried to my very best. It was, it was so creepy. I, I will admit, and I could feel like it was really cold. And how can I explain it? It felt like going into a basement. So we go in. Huge doors, by the way. Those are huge doors when you go in. Go in and it's they have the Jewish prayer going on, which that loud noise of like what I like repeated it that was creeping me out too. I can't take loud noise for too long. I can really see in that room too is another thing. So she's explaining about the box and stuff and and the ring of sage and soul and that the the father comes in less is everything I think once a month or something or once in a while I'm calming myself down like this is okay you'll be fine look everybody's around you your hubby's with you you're fine and I'm like looking at it and like don't touch it don't touch the box and then she's explaining about the line between the box and the glass that you can see the little like it's starting like to move it out to try to break it which is creepy one thing i'll add you guys can believe me or not this is just experience of mine from afterwards too at this part i don't know if it was such an impact or maybe my subconscious was so proud of me for overcoming it and going in. I had a dream the day before Zach did the thing that he wanted to read, like open the debit box. I think the day before. Let me see, I should have it here. October 22nd, which is my birthday actually. I had a dream of me being in my kitchen with my little girl, and my mom, and my grandma, and not my current grandma, my grandma that passed away and that I never got to see her. The only thing I remember of her is me kissing her goodbye in her casket, which is weird because I was only two or one, and my dad explained to me, there's no way for you to remember that, because you were too little. 
anyway, I digress. She was in the dream. She was putting down a half of a smoking cigar on what looked like a wooden box. Then on the 24th or the 25th of October, Ghost Adventures announced that they are going to open the debit box. And I have it written here. That's a weird note. Oh, yeah, due to the thing, I did take a crystal. The oldest crystal I can have. Took something that was with me for a while. So I can leave it behind because I remember them saying if you want to offer something here, money, I didn't have cash, a ring or whatever. And I didn't want to take, I had other stuff. I'm like, I don't want that. I'll leave my crystal. I love my crystal. But it's fine. So I offered my crystal, dropped it in with the whole thing. The next room, we're in the hallway next to the stairs. And I couldn't help but look down the stairs for the basement. Oh my god. So cool and creepy at the same time. She was explaining that this is a basement and you can't go in. I hope I have the order right. I can't remember right the order, so forgive me if I don't have it right. And she's explaining the basement how we can't go in. But I got this weird feeling. But I do this as like a habit of mine, which is a bad habit. <laughs> I'm like leaning against stuff and I was about to lean against the rail, the basement railing stairs. And I did for a second. And then I got this feeling of like, don't do that. You might fall down the stairs. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, okay, then I won't do that. <laughs> So I backed off and I'm like, I'm not gonna touch that in case that does happen. That would suck if something pushed me down or I need my mind. I couldn't help it and I looked down the stairs. When I looked down the stairs, oh my God, it was so creepy. I swear I saw like the size of the door of the hallway. I know it's dark, but I could see in the dark pretty good. And it was about the same size as the door railing thing, a shadow. And it was, I swear, it was looking back at me. And I was like, oh, bye. <laughs> and I, I kept going. I was always like behind. I was the last person always with my husband. I was like the last person who was like getting a few extra seconds of whatever we were looking at. The next room was the mannequin, but I couldn't look at it right because I was the last one and they were already going to the other room. And my husband was like, look, look, look how cool. I'm like, what? The mannequins are moving. I'm like, dang it, I missed that part. <laughs> but next time, hopefully I could probably go with a better mindset. There's so many things in, in the museum. It's like kind of not fair because there's a lot of things and it's so quick. You kind of miss a lot. Anyway, the mannequins are cool. The clown room was shut down because of maintenance or something. So we went through somewhere else, something like that, I can't remember. And I remember it started like, they did like a fun house theme, which is so cool. My husband really liked that. And I'm like, I'm glad he liked that part. Cause that reminded me of like when you, Halloween, you go to the little, fun houses for the school parks or whatever and we go through and then the, that's the part with the clown talking and the creepy clowns I didn't know the clown in front of you is real a real person so I'm like looking at the, <laughs> I'm looking at the person I thought it was a dummy but my mind's like that looks like a real person so i'm looking at the eyes of the person like this i wonder if the person thought it was crazy <laughs> that was funny i didn't only know this now because i was seeing something relating oh it was something that happened that this guy was looking at the clown and something happened that he fainted looking at the clown i was just looking at it because i thought it was real and then since it was he was so still i'm like oh it's fake but it looks cool it was a real guy whatever 
good trip and the next part we go in that same guy that's when i noticed who was it the same guy i can't remember half the museum then we go to the other part where the clowns are and they're like talking about clowns and i forget the rest of it they, they, they like clowns or whatever i'm terrible with stuff like that it was cool though and then 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 the dolls and this is when it starts getting weird i don't know if this was my mind playing tricks why it would go like this this started to burn at the point that i had to pick it up like this and my husband was like don't take it off okay he's catholic and he's religious with that and i'm like i know when it's hot it's burning me like and I, I let it i let it go again and i'm thinking it's got to be because of the hot weather it's hot but to the point that it's burning i mean right now it feels cool and it's hot it's siri hey siri what's the temperature it's 73 degrees right now okay and i don't remember what i think it was around 90 when we went it was hot but inside with the air conditioner you don't think that this would be that hot i couldn't explain it it would get hot to the point that i would have to lift it up like this and my husband was like looking at me like it's hot it's hot it's, it's hot and then i let it go again and then she keeps explaining about the next room and then she says this is the peggy room and it starts to get hot again and i pull it up and he's like do not take it off. I'm like, I won't, I won't take it off, but it's burning, so I have to lift it up. Like, lay it on, it's protecting you. I'm like, okay. This is creepy. I totally forgot about this room. The room before Peggy's room, we had just left the demon house room. And this was totally optional. And it was, I think, even worse than the other box room. And I went through it. And I didn't feel it anything but comfort which is creepy because it's the demon house room so there's that so my theory is my necklace or my grandma was protecting me from the last room we were just in. not or maybe the peggy but i really doubt i think it was the demon house room that it was protecting me from now that's it on again on the third try took it on, took it, lifted it up again, it was hot, and then it, I'm like, for some reason, the third, which is even creepier, on the third time, it stopped burning. And then they ask if we want to go to Peggy's room, and to be respectful, and uh, how to introduce yourself, and blah, blah, blah. I have a very quiet voice. In that spirit box, is so loud like if you want to talk you can't talk i don't even think they could hear i don't think it matters so i'm like oh. <laughs> i couldn't hear myself when i said hello to peggy um the cynthia doll is creepy more than peggy because i had a dream right like a, a week after i think oh that Cynthia doll because I can remember big eyes and the doll. I don't know if it was big eyes or what. I know it was a doll in the dream. And I'm in a room and the room is closed and she is teasing me or like freaking me out and I'm on the bed and she's on the bed and then she has a whole like almost like a sleep paralysis, sleep paralysis but in the dream. And I got my I woke myself out of it. That was creepy. But it could be because of the impression of like of the dolls because they're creepy. Anyway. Um I try to say hi to her. And by the time I was trying to talk, then like I wasn't scared. I was I really wanted to try out the spirit box. I've never had a, like that experience. 
and then I guess she didn't want to talk and she's like was it done seriously she just said done I think it was that yeah the spirit box said done I'm like oh, okay <laughs> bye Peggy and I said bye everybody left and then the tour guide had to close the door because when she says bye then you have to leave right away uh oh my god Oh, it's 9 30. Damn, my alarm scared the crap out of me. Okay. But I'm still left with questions, and I'm not sure yet if it was all in my mind or there's activity in the museum. Even though I have had dreams, and then even to the point that they are almost premonition, premonition. To the point that they are information before something happens happening. If you believe that stuff, I'm not saying I don't. I just don't want to seem like a crazy person that went to the museum. It's a pretension. I'm not looking for attention. I'm looking for validation of the dreams and stuff and all this. Is it true? Because uh, I fight a lot with logic in my mind has a very logical way of explaining things even though I experienced these weird situations that was my experience at the museum I wish I could go back because I need answers I'm very lucky so far in my current home is knock on wood I don't want to jinx it knock on wood it's not haunted thank god I've been blessed but I believe things follow me currently I'm not working so it's been very peaceful but if I go out to the place it's like a magnet so things follow me and I have to always be saging and cleaning and praying and this and that to keep it normal it sounds weird but it's worked for me it's been very peaceful all right, that was my experience at the museum. Overall, I think he did do an awesome job. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope I can do more videos like this in the future. Meanwhile, I might be doing like kind of like if your place is haunted without equipment, other videos like that, and how to overcome things, advice like that in the future. So look out for that. Subscribe the bell and I'll probably be doing videos I, sh I am gonna be doing videos every Monday and Sundays for fun I'll probably be on Twitch playing spooky spooky video games so look out for that on midnight on Sundays I will be playing the scariest game there is on Twitch <laughs> so thank you for watching enjoy your night God bless see you next time